and welcome to Hearthstone Top 5. My name is Benjamin Hero and today we will be discussing the top 5 cards in Hearthstone that you forgot about. This time, <laughs> this time I'm confident that you would not guess who actually number 1 will be. Alright boys and girls, let's get started. At number 5 we have Cardmaster's Wrench. A 3 mana 1 free weapon that has the effect of gaining plus 2 attack if you have a friendly mech on the battlefield. Now this, <laughs> this card was so bad they never saw play in constructed or arena. Now if you see a card that doesn't see play in constructed or arena, you know you're dealing with an atrocious card. To be fair, to be fair, Cogmaster's Wrench is actually alright. I mean, if you have a mech on the battlefield, it's not too bad. And the main reason why people just forgot about Cogmaster's Wrench is the fact it was just so mediocre. It wasn't as bad as Poison Blade, but it was just alright. <laughs> and the key thing that Cogmaster's Wrench taught us in life, the best way to be forgotten is just to be <laughs> mediocre. At number 4, we have a card which I'm pretty sure you don't even remember the name of. And that is Ogima Aspirant! Ogima Aspirant is a 3 mana 3-3 free free with Inspire effect, giving weapon plus 1 attack. You might, you might look at this card and think, but Benjamin, this card seems pretty alright. I mean, how can people forget about this card? And like you, I thought it would see play. When this card came out in TGT, I thought Warriors, my lord, Warriors, you have a good card all of a sudden. And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> it turns out nobody wants this card. At the time when Ogima Spiren came out, there were only two types of Warriors. There was either Control Warrior or there was Patron Warrior. And neither of these two decks would want a card like Ogimar Aspirant. <laughs> and then even the more obscure decks such as Combo Warrior and Face Warrior also don't want Ogimar Aspirant. And Ogimar Aspirant if its effect is not even that good. There's a card called Upgrade which does the exact same thing and even more. And that only costs one mana. <laughs> so it was no wonder that in the end nobody cared about Ogma Aspirant and why it was forgotten in the sands of time. Ogma Aspirant was just a victim of being a decent card in the wrong deck. At number 3 we have Mufasa! <laughs> Oh, the King of Beasts, a 5 mana 2-6 with the effect to gain plus 1 attack for each friendly beast on the battlefield. <laughs> Actually, the King of Beasts did get some fame when it came out, but being the card with one of the worst artworks in the game. It just looks really bad in card form, but I do love the face the King of Beasts makes. It's one of the most judgmental faces I have ever seen in life. And I find it just hilarious. And the big reason why the King of a Beast entered the land of obscurity is because it was competing with a little well-known card called Sludge Belcher. And you don't. And you don't compete with Sludge Belcher. Sludge Belcher has more consistent stats Sludge Belcher can work better independently. Sludge Belcher can resist AoE. <laughs> so it was no wonder why the King of Beasts was quickly forgotten and nobody even paid attention to it anymore. Because he don't compete with Sludge Belcher. <sighs> now that both Sludge Belcher and the King of Beasts are in wild, it's a bit of a shame because now the King can never show the people what he is made of. Kinda like Mufasa. At number 2, we have Void Crusher, a 6 mana 5 4 inspired minion with the effect to destroy a random minion for each player. Let me tell you three reasons why this card was dead on arrival when it came out in TGT. Number 1, it has 4 health, meaning that it will die to a lot of the common 4 damage cards, meaning that its sustained power is not very good. Number 2, Void Crusher costs 6 mana, 
meaning that it has to survive until turn 7 or you have to play it on turn 8 to get this inspire effect which makes void crusher an incredibly slow card number 3 it can kill itself <sighs> and because of those three reasons void crusher will always be forgotten in time it's sad really <laughs> Uh, maybe, no, not even in Tavern Brawl, Void Crusher will make an appearance. At number one, we have perhaps the most tragic card on the list, and that is Magnetor Alpha, a 4 mana 5 free minion with the effect to also damage each minion whomever he attacks. So it essentially has the 4 Reaper 4000 effect in a smaller package. Magnetor Alpha is such a tragedy. It's 5 attack actually means it can destroy almost any mid game minions and it can destroy up to 3 minions. But the deal breaker, ladies and gentlemen, the deal breaker is its free health. With the free health it means it can die to almost everything in the game. And you can't have free health on a 4 attack minion, on a 4 on a 4 mana minion with only doing something extraordinary to turn you play it. And that is why players just didn't give it a chance. In the end, like Magneto Alpha was never as bad as Magma Rager. It was never as OP as Pirate Shredder. And it was never as loved as Unstable Portal. It would just sit there in your collection, ready to be <laughs> disenchanted to get that 100 dust. Because it's an epic. So in the end, Magneto Alpha just did not fit in anyone's deck. And that's why it is the most forgotten card in Hearthstone. Magneto Alpha, bare luck in Tavern Brawl. So, 4 mana, 5, 3, no. Man, no, it's not worth charging. In Arena, also no. Yeah, I, I think this is just pretty awful, and I don't think it, it will ever see play because of the amount of things that have to go your way for it to get value. Again, I don't think this is too strong either. It's too weak to removal. 5-3 is it's just like, almost has the same problem as Magma Rager in the sense that it's just like, too easy to kill a 4 mana with 3 health. And I'm not saying it's like particularly good, I'm saying there are some redeeming qualities to this obviously terrible card. And that is it. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, please think about subscribing since that would do a whole ton to help the channel. Also, you can check out last week's video where I discussed the top five cards that can either be insane or terrible from the whispers of the old gods. And also, you might have noticed I've changed the channel name from Hearthstone Top 10 to Benjamin Hero Hearthstone. And the main reason for that is I'm doing more videos than just the Top 10. So I thought to keep the name Hearthstone Top 10 seems a bit weird. <laughs> so I made it a more of a fitting name. And if you're wondering why did I add the Hearthstone tag at the end, I actually do have another YouTube channel for motivational videos. I haven't uploaded there for months, but I love motivational videos and I, I'll keep intent to making them for pretty much for as long as I live. So this is why I added the Hearthstone tag at the end of Benjamin Hero. Again guys, thank you for your help. Also, if we can, uh, if we can ask for more of your help, I've got three different thumbnails that I want to change because you might have noticed that my thumbnails are pretty terrible. So out of these three thumbnails that you're seeing on the screen, which do you think has the most clickbait potential? <laughs> Let's be honest, thumbnails are all about clickbaiting people into watching the video. So, <laughs> so I'm asking you guys, since you guys would know the best thumbnails that will entice you to go and watch this video. So either one, two and three, please leave a comment letting me know which thumbnail really speaks to you. and. Any, and any other feedback you have. As usual, I'll do my utmost to respond and to reply to every single one of your comments. Again, I'm sorry for having such a long outro. Again, thank you guys for being awesome. And ladies and gentlemen, I will see you in the next video. Adios.